Today's video is sponsored by Skillshare. Click the link in the description to get two free months of premium membership and explore your creativity. It's the new year, so setting a new year's resolution is on everybody's minds, and I think that's a good thing. It's easy to see people online uh, that are too cool for new year's resolutions, and so they poke fun at that kind of thing on social media, but I honestly think it's a good thing. I think it's a healthy thing to set goals for yourself and strive for those goals, not only just, you know, something that you can cross off the list on, you know, a free afternoon, but actually setting a goal that you continue to work on throughout the year, leading to actually building a stronger habit. It. I think this is extremely important to do in regards to photography. I've been doing this for a really long time, and as time goes on, I've realized there really is no just end in sight or finish line in regards to photography. I would love to just be able to check things off of my list and complete things as I tend to do, but photography just doesn't work that way. You can finish a project, you can publish a photo book, you can get featured in some article online, but at the end of the day, once the next day comes, you're going to have to continue making photos and doing something different so there really just is no end to it so today I'm gonna share a few photography goals that you can set for yourself in 2020 and continue to work on throughout the year Number one, develop a personal project. I know this might seem like a pretty obvious one to just, you know, do a personal project, but I want to focus more on the idea of developing the project itself rather than completing it. I'm a big advocate for having a personal project that you can be working on at all times. So whether you are really busy with work or family life or you're feeling really inspired or maybe you're in the middle of a creative rut, constantly developing and shaping that personal project helps keep the blade sharp. Even if you don't have the time or means to really shoot the personal project right now, you can still do things on the back end just to keep that ball rolling and kind of get a better visualization of what the project might turn out to be. Maybe you can pre-visualize certain photos that you're planning to make for that project. You can kind of sketch those out even on paper. Uh, you can start to answer some of those technical questions that you might have later on. So you can start thinking about whether you're shooting black and white or color. And if you're shooting color, maybe you can think about what kind of colors you're working with and what would really kind of help that photo in the long run. Or you could think about lighting too. What kind of lighting would best suit that particular photo? I have tons and tons of notes both in my notebooks and also in my iPad and my iPhone where I'm jotting down ideas and sketching things out. I may not know when I'm going to make those photos, but I'm already starting to build out that idea ahead of time. Maybe there are people that are going to be involved in the project itself, and you might not be ready to start working with them and taking photos of them, but reach out to them in advance. Start building that relationship and get a better understanding as to what you're going to be doing, what they're going to be doing, and making sure that that's clear between the two of you. When it comes time to shoot, it would be better to already have that understanding and that relationship built between the photographer and the subject rather than just trying to squeeze all of that in a few minutes before you make the photo. So even if you don't have time to shoot the personal project right now, you can still continue to just develop and shape things on the back end and that's going to help you whenever it comes time to actually shoot. Number two, get out of your comfort zone. I know it's really easy to get stuck in shooting the same thing over and over year after year, and I'm a firm believer that you should photograph the things you love and the things that you love to photograph, but at the same time, it's nice to get out of your comfort zone and try something different. Breaking up the monotony of shooting the same thing over and over is not only a good way to get out of a creative rut, but if you do that sort of thing regularly, it might be a good way to just kind of keep that creative rut at bay and lessen the frequency that that sets in. You could talk to some of your peers that are shooting different things than you and you can just kind of pick their brain and figure out a good place to start. So maybe that's with street photography or astrophotography or still life photography. There are so many different directions you can take with a camera that really you could just spin a wheel and just go with whatever it lands on. But maybe it's not even shooting a different genre. You could also apply this to just different techniques as well. So maybe you want to learn more about off-camera lighting or you want to learn how to develop film or build a pinhole camera. There are so many different different things you can do that you can learn from, and that's really the whole goal is just getting out of your comfort zone so that you can learn more. There are things I've learned from shooting skateboarding whenever I first got into photography that have translated into now how I shoot photos on a daily basis of my family. That anticipation and waiting for just the right moment, that's something I picked up in skateboarding years ago, and now that's something I apply every day. So there's always a lesson to be learned regardless of what genre it is or what kind of style of shooting you're doing. You can learn something from one aspect and apply it to another. Even if you don't end up loving that new technique or genre of photography that you try out, you can learn something there and apply it to the work that you actually love to make. 
Number three, reach for your personal style. And I know this is easier said than done. I'm constantly getting comments and messages from people asking how it is they can find their own voice within photography. And to be honest, I'm 15 years in and I think I'm just now starting to scratch the surface of what my style is, or at least what I think my style is. I feel like I probably had an idea of what my style was 10 years ago and five years ago, and it's just going to change year after year. One thing I can recommend is to study some of your favorite photographers very, very closely and sort of as a collection. So whether it be a photographer that has plenty of large bodies of work and it's published, or maybe it's just a photographer that you follow on Instagram, what is it about their work that you connect with? And once you've done that, try and figure out what it is that connects all of these photographers together. What do they all share in common that you seem to really gravitate towards? Chase those elements in your own work and try to establish that as part of your style. Uh, I think this whole idea of personal style, it's always chalked up to a lot of technical things like what kind of color you like to work with or lighting or how grainy your black and white film is but your voice is what you really have to develop and come up with on your own um, all of these other technical things they're definitely important and they help establish a look for sure but that's all been done before you have to put a part of yourself in the work in order to really make it your own and make it stand out once you've done that, those technical things become a little bit more subtle and suddenly the conversation is more about your voice rather than your gear. It's not easy and there's no real answer to it, but just continuing to put in the work day after day and always shooting and being conscious of the work you're consuming and what it is that's inspiring you, that's the best thing you can do in terms of finding your own voice and your own style. Before we wrap up, I want to take a minute to pay some bills and tell you about our sponsor today, which is Skillshare. Obviously, today we're talking about setting goals and New Year's resolutions, and Skillshare can be a great help with that. Skillshare is an online learning community that offers membership with meaning. With so much to explore, real projects to create, and the support of fellow creatives, Skillshare empowers you to accomplish real growth. Skillshare offers classes designed for real life so you can move your creative journey forward without putting your life on hold. There are tons of great photography classes on Skillshare from people like Steven Vanasco, Andre Wagner, Elizabeth Weinberg, but I've also taken other classes that are outside of photography as well. There's a new class on productivity and building habits that actually stick, and that's taught by Thomas Frank. That's somebody that I've watched on YouTube for years. You've probably already heard or seen of him. Those are the kind of things I'm always looking to improve myself, so to actually take a class from somebody that I've followed for years and someone I actually admire, it's a really great platform. It's also really affordable as well, especially if you compare it to an in-class, in-person kind of setting. With something like Skillshare, you can really work with it at your own pace and to fit your own schedule, and it's only less than $10 a month whenever you sign up annually. So if you want to try Skillshare out for the new year, make sure you check out the link in the description and you can get two months entirely free of their premium membership and explore your creativity. So I hope this gave you a little bit of inspiration for goals that you can set for 2020 and continue to work on throughout the year, but if you already have some goals that you've set for yourself, I'd love to hear about those in the comments down below. Uh, if you're new here, there are new videos every Monday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and there are a lot of videos that go back over the last five years on shooting film, developing film, photo books, lighting, all kinds of stuff. So if you enjoyed this video, definitely consider sticking around and subscribing. Also, one of the biggest goals I've had all these years is to just encourage other people to document their lives because it's something I feel very passionately about and it's something I think everybody should do. And to celebrate that, I have actually just released a bunch of new merch all centered around the idea of documenting your life. So if you want to check that out and support the channel and spread that word, there is a link in the description. But that's it for today. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.